Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my June wrap up part one. Now, <laughs> as always, sweet is in here. Having a right good month of it. It's not been the best month. Didn't get the good news from the hospital. I'm not going to have the off anytime soon. So things will be staying the same on my channel. I just might be going through a few other things, but I've had Mia being poorly this week. It's just been one hell of a week and I am not a happy, bright, sunshiny Emily that you would normally see. And I'm having a month of four stars. Don't get me wrong. Um, I've had four five stars and three four and a half stars. But the books I was expecting to be five stars haven't been. And then, yeah, um, I've read loads. I'm filming this on the 14th and I've read 16 books. So that is really positive. I've DNF1, which I'll tell you in a minute. So technically, I'm doing really well on my reading. I did do cosy reading um, day on the Saturday, which I think had a big part to play in that. And I've literally, when I'm not feeling myself, which I'm not at the moment, happiness wise, I read a lot. That's just my way of dealing with stuff is that when I am feeling sad, I hide in my books. And that's what I've been doing a lot. I have been watching Vampire Diaries with Mia, so don't laugh at me. So I do watch that, which kind of distracts me from reading sometimes. And obviously I've been a mum this, this last few couple of weeks. And that's taken away a bit more of my time. But I'm reading when I can. I may have cheated and I've got a couple of shorter books, but I'll show you them in a minute. Anyway, so that's what, how it's going. I am obviously still reading The Count of Monte Cristo, which is partly for the Big Book Summer which is hosted by Sue Jackson. I'll link her channel down below. I'm currently reading that over the course of the some of the next two months and I've got another couple of big books in here. So they'll count for that as well. But this is actually going a lot better than I expected. Seeing as I'm off today, I might actually read a little bit of that today. I've got a couple. I will already show you that I picked up in a book that's not on my TBR that I'm gonna start that I started last night. Actually, I should have put that as my company reading. I started this last night and that is The Farmhouse of Second Chances. Nice light contemporary that was on my shelves. I think I'm gonna try and crack on and read a bit more of that today. And then I've got another TBR book. But I've read a couple of a few books that aren't on my TBR. I've got my normal six or seven books that are being added. No, I think it's six that are being added to my TBR. And then I've got two library books, which I thought I'd actually show you in, in this bit. I can actually show you two of my library books that I've chosen to add to the TBR, which don't count on my numbers, as in the books off my TBR numbers, but they do count, obviously, in my reading numbers. Rambling, I don't want this video to be too long, as I always say. So the first book is my three-star book. I have been rearranging my shelf. So in July, you're going to see a fantasy book tour because I've rearranged my middle grade and YA shelves and taken... The classics upstairs and put the YA contemporaries in with the adult contemporaries but this one I wanted off my shelves because it's a Mary Poppins book I thought it'd be quite a nice short and sweet book it'd be very light after the hard hitting books but it was very light it was like three stars light it wasn't as good as the Mary Poppins first book and I didn't even like it as much because Mary Poppins isn't in it as much and I didn't enjoy it as much as the first book so it is only three stars I might as well need to write it down <laughs> everything is kaputted today I'm, having to, I'm off work and I'm having to film on a day that I'm not... Yeah. Anyway, so that was only three stars. So that's going to get a written review, but that's three stars. I forgot to mention, yes, my DNF was The Sisters. I literally looked at it and I must admit, it's not even barely even a DNF. I think it was more of a case of I didn't even start it. It was, it's a thriller, psychological thriller about one sister dying. And at the moment, I can't handle it. And I'm realistically thinking that I can't handle psychological thrillers. So there will be a bit of an unhaul of my psychological thrillers. Mysteries, love. Cozy mysteries, love. Psychological thrillers, no, no, can't deal with them. So that one has gone off my shelves. My three and a half star book was the book that was sent to me by Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe. And that is The Storm Swimmer by Claire Weiss. I actually get what Olivia said. It was three and a half stars because it's my fantasy book. But I get what Olivia said. It is more of a middle grade, middle grade book. And it is my fancy. It's got some quite good themes in it. Um, and it is a good book. But it's very much more for the middle grade audience. Uh, but it's about Jinica who is... Basically she's got to go and stay with her grandparents in the summer. And she meets Perry, the boy from the sea. Who dives through the white water like a dolphin. And talks like, like bursts of bubbles. His family are far away too, and unlike Janika, he loves his independence. 
and it's about friendships and and things like that and it also does have a bit of disability rep in it because one of the kids in it is in a wheelchair um so it does have a bit of that in it which was good but it was very much a middle grade book so I, I, i'm grateful that olivia sent it to me but it's not necessarily one i'm gonna want to reread i'm afraid then for one of the prompts obviously i will be linking my um reading blog for the 24 hour read long and also the books i was reading for that i won't really go into too much details on but I read a short, one of the prompts was to read a short book, and this is a quick read book, and it was Notting Hill Carnival, A West Side Story. And that is a retelling, it is basically a retelling of, of the West Side Story retelling, but it's done at Notting Hill. It does tackle race very well. It tackles, um, it's got LGBTQI reference in it. It's a really good, I'm not very good with short stories, but this was incredible. This was my first of my four stars, and it was a really, really good book. And it's one, it's by Candice Carty Williams, so we knew it was going to be a good book. But it's definitely one I recommend. It is more YA, but it's really good. It's about, like like I said, if you know about Notting Hill Carnival, if you know about West Side Story, it kind of combines the two. And it is done really well, and I loved it. It's really thoroughly good for four stars. Now to my book that's four stars, because the writing is really good. But Katie from Books and Things rated it five stars. I nearly bought it hardback, and I'm glad I didn't. And this is Amazing Grace Adams, and I don't know what to do with it. It's four stars, and normally with my four stars, I don't keep them, but I got this full price after one of my hospital visits at the start of the year. Yet, for me, a four star book, the, like I said, the writing was really good, but I can't see myself rereading it. I might give it to mum to see if she can read it and see what she thinks of it, let her try it, but I don't know whether I should keep it or not. I bought, paid full price, like a supermarket price. It was only like five pounds, like a supermarket price. But, I just, it was more literary fiction, partly literary fiction, which I don't necessarily get on with, but it's tackling issues that for me felt a bit too close to home. I think you guys need to look it up. And if you want to know what, what triggers are on this, please let me know, but I really don't feel comfortable discussing it, but there are some triggers in this. And I thought there'd be some funny bits, you know, the fact that the way she just abandons her car in the middle of the road and she goes off and she's just like done with life. I thought it'd be about that, but it's tackling way harder stuff than that. And Grace Adams is feeling overlooked and underappreciated and particularly tired of being polite. So she sets on a journey to discover, rediscover who she is and confront the past, a secret that has torn her family apart. Very, very, very hard hitting. I really don't know how to feel about it. I think it would be a one for mum to try. I'm so sorry, Katie. It wasn't one that amazed me like I wanted it to. Then for one of my books that was like almost like a summer book, this was a good four star. This was The House in the Olive Grove. And it's a story of warmth, hope, laughter and hope. Yeah, it was a really lovely hit book. It's it's mainly contemporary. It is, again, it does, there are some triggers in this. Again, you'll see the triggers when you're reading it. Um, there's three very, very different women. Three very different lives and a summer they won't forget. And it's about friendships. It's set in Greece, so I love that Greek setting. The women have all got very different issues, very different hard hitting things. Again, there are some disability reps. Straight away we know that one of the that one of the ladies has scars. So if you count that as a disability, then that is reps in that. Um and it's I love seeing the friendships. I love the way they all got together, the way they all sort of became friends and the way that how different they are and I think it's an amazing book but yeah there are some triggers in this as well i love the location the location description is good i've read um one letter from greece by this author emma cowell and i loved that book and i really enjoyed this book and it's one i'm definitely definitely glad i read and that is a definite one one will enjoy the next one is my tbr jar pick and tbr jar did well this month finally it did another it had another good one it didn't have a five star four stars but still good and this is a postcard from paris by alex brown this is historical fiction, partly set in 1916 and partly set in the current day. And it's set in Paris, so I'm getting good at reading my books set in other countries. Really European countries, but still good. And Annie Lovell is keen to put the spark back in her life. So when her elderly neighbour inherits an abandoned Parisian apartment, she goes to Paris to discover more. And she finds out about the history of Paris and she finds out about this the lady that lived in Paris but was from England and how the, their two lives can interconnect. And it follows Beatrice's journey, who's the lady from the past, um, through from the Great War through to the Roaring Twenties to a different life in Nazi-occupied Paris. So it does tackle a long time. 
it's a really cozy book really not cozy it is hard hitting because there are obviously some stuff that happened in not in the great war and in nazi occupied paris we know that there are some really big hard hitting things that happen there but this is a really good book and one i definitely recommend and i've just realized you guys are here in the washing machine again and into another one that was gifted to me i think I'm, i think mum should like this i'm going to give it a go because i think there were some moments in this where i laughed Love Lockdown by Beth Rakels. She's the one who wrote The Kissing Booth, which I've watched with Mia, and I love The Kissing Booth series. And this is a bit more, this is more adult, and it is set up during COVID. It's set right at the start, just before we went into complete lockdown. And this is about when an apartment block is put on lockdown, it's residents are in for a whirlwind week. And I really enjoyed it. I think this one is one I can reread. So even though it's four stars, it's a higher end four stars in my eyes. Possibly should have put it at four and a half because looking back i really enjoyed that more than i enjoyed some of the other ones so it's about like basically they're different flats there's one two three four five flats and all the different stories and they all interlink really well and about lockdown so there are some triggers that lockdown brought back and covid brought back and i think looking back did we ever realize how it was going to go i don't think any of us did at the start so that bit still causes emotions but it is a really good book and one I thought was fantastic and they're very different stories and you have moments where you laugh, moments where you cry. You've got me thinking, I kind of wish I knew what happened to all these people afterwards, even though it's fantasy, even though it's fiction. Then to another book that let me down a bit. Um, Katie loved it. It's Learned by Heart by Emma Donoghue. It is four stars. It is a really good book, but it wasn't five stars. I bought this because someone had said that they thought it sounded good and Katie loved it and I bought it full price I spent quite a bit of money on it because it's a signed copy like oh um, no that's the wrong one signed copy I paid quite a lot for it and I'm regretting that because it wasn't five stars like now I know I've got, I've got to keep it I keep my books that I spent loads of money on and I'm hoping that maybe if I reread it I might enjoy it more it is about like obviously Eliza Rain and the infamous Anne Lister, who was one of the first LGBTQI characters. It does count for Pride Month. And I think none of the other books yet are counting for Pride Month. There is some Pride Month issues in certain Pride Month characters in Notting Hill. I think that's it. Yeah, none of the other ones yet. Yet. So it does count for Pride Month. And it is a good book and it's a beautiful book. There's two storylines, there's two sort of timelines, partly set in 1805 and partly set a bit further in the future. 1805 it's set in the manor house for young ladies in york it is a good book it just didn't wow me as much like the first bit of it was a bit of a drag and i didn't necessarily love it love it it's not like a favorite and considering how much i spent on it i wished it was going to be a favorite so yeah it's four stars and i'm going to keep it because obviously i've got to keep it but yeah it wasn't the amazing five stars that i wanted then to another book that I added onto my TBL because I wanted a shorter book and I wanted a non-fiction because I haven't got, had a non-fiction yet this month. And that is Stories of Hope by Heather Morris. And this is, I thought it was, I rated it five stars when I first read it and I listened to it on an audio book and I rated it five stars. But when I reread it, it's more like four stars. And that is because it's short stories. It does talk about all, the, like, it has people from all of our other three, from our first three books in it. And it does talk about the art of listening, but it is, that's the point. It's more about listening and about how we listen and we're listening to ourselves. And it's more like advice, like than short stories. And it's not exactly as I remembered it. So I'm not actually gonna keep this. This was a charity shop book anyway, so it's fine. And I've got her main novels and her main novels are absolutely incredible. And I loved the references to the main novels. And I loved the research behind the main novels. But it wasn't as amazing as I want it to be. And I don't think I'm going to keep that, actually. That one's going to charge you. So they're all the four stars. And now I've got my four and a half stars. And these are all books that are absolutely incredible. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the first of it, it was one of my series books. So completed the second in a trilogy. Loved the first book in this, which was um, uh, Daughters of War. Loved the second, The Hidden Palace. This is about, and it literally follows directly on from the from the sisters one, sister daughters of war. It's called the sorry, the daughters of war, and this was literally following directly on it. It's basically about Florence's story, who was the youngest of the sisters. It does count the other sisters; they're in it a little bit, but not very much. It is literally about what I like is that there's two timelines, which works perfectly because it doesn't overwhelm me. 
It's two timelines, it's Florence's story and it's her aunt Rosalie de Delacroix story. Her, her aunt, right at the start of the book, we find out that her, that Florence's mum wants her to find Florence's mum, um, Florence's aunt, who was her, her mum's sister, because she went missing very, a lot, about 20 odd years ago. And she wants to know what happened to her, she wants to know if she's alive, she wants to find her. And so you get both timelines, both storylines and how they all come together. It is hard hitting. You're going from the 1920s through to the cup through to the war and it's partly set in Malta pardon me and i love Malta. i love the hit stories i've never i went there when, when i was a baby but i don't remember it um but i love the settings i thought the location was description it was interesting to find out about what happened in there during the war and during the 20s and all that time but it is very brutal it's very hard hitting but it is very good and i thoroughly loved it, it i'm keeping this and mum's gonna want to read that And the next one, which is a book by Erica James, it's a secret garden affair. Mum will love this one as well. It's set partly in 1981, and but it's also set again in the 1920s. So I didn't really, I, I thought, feel freaked out by the idea of historical fiction books being set in the 80s when I was born 1979. Like I was two in this book's mainly the the current timeline of this book. Um, but it does go up to the 20s. It goes back to lifelong friends. The past line is about lifelong friends, Bess and Elfrida. And um, in the current twenty like nineteen eighty one story, it's about Livy, and Livy like runs away from her cheating fiance at the start of the book, and you get it, and and then you go back to the other timelines, and the two timelines again they work really well. The settings are beautiful. Part of it's set in the Suffolk countryside. It's gorgeous setting. It's a beautiful, beautiful book, and I really loved it. Like I struggle with mothers and daughters because of the issues in it. But this was just historical fiction all the way. It's one of Erica James's best books in my eyes. Bloody loved it. I thought it was absolutely incredible. If you like historical fiction, if you like the beautiful garden stuff, if you like books set in a bit more of the twenties as well as all the like the other wartime issues, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. And my other four, four and a half star book was a library book which I've obviously given back, which is the Forgotten Letters of Esther Durant, and that's by Kay at Nunn. And again, it was a historical fiction. Really loved it. I can't remember too much, so you have to look online, but it was a really, really good book. Um, again, it's historical fiction. It's set partly in the Cornish Islands. It's sort of mainly set right in the down south in the Cornish Islands. And it's got the current timeline and it's got a past timeline, which is set sort of, I don't know, I think it's like wartime, I think. My brain is fried today, I'm sorry. But again, it was a really good book. Kate at Nunn's books are fantastic. Every time I've read their books, I love them. Really enjoyed the historical fiction, really enjoyed the, enjoyed the dual timelines, thought it was amazing. Now I've got four or five stars. I'm not going to count my series book as a favourite for the month, but the other two, but they're all amazing. Like, I'm not going to pick a favourite as actually, I do know a favourite of the month and I feel kind of conflicted, but this book is obviously amazing. It's The Mark of, Ali of Athena by Rick Royalden. It counts for the big book summer because it's mahusive, it's like 500 odd 580 pages it's that one i flew through and i was like right i'm not going to read the next book in the series in july because my jane Aust my july tbr is massive you will see i've got my jane austen july tbr and when you add that to my july tbr it's about 20 books and that's before i've gone through library books or anything else i want to read and i'm on holiday at the end so th that is incredible but this was fan flipping tastic i absolutely loved it it's that I can't say too much because it really is. It's more about Annabeth's storyline in this, and she's meeting up with Percy. I can't go into details because it's so far into the story, but let's just say it ends on a note where you have to read the fourth, where you have to read the fifth book, like you have to read it straight after because it le leaves on a cliffhanger and you need to find out what happens next. So I'll be reading the next book at the start of bloody July. Sod Jane Austen in July. That needs to be done. Cat was right. It's my buddy room cat. Bloody loved it. Thoroughly five stars. That's a keepy. No, that's my keepy. Where am I putting my keepies? I don't even know what I've done with my books. There you go. That's my keepies. That's my keepy. Then the so next one is an Agatha Christie book, which again I read in for the 24 hour read long, and it is The Murderers and Outs. It's my first Miss Marple. Five stars all the way. You can see Miss Marple's books are slightly softer. Sli but they're not softer. But I, Miss Marple's character is slightly softer than Poirot. But she's really good detective and she was really like can i be i thought it was really really good i didn't guess the killer i didn't guess any of the twists i thought it was bloody bloody good i read it because kirsten from reading it who was running the 24 hour read long 
was recommended this and re re reckon she absolutely loved it so I wanted to read it. I got it in Waking Up at the start of the year and I'm finding now that I'm reading books pretty quickly after buying them now because where I've not got as many older books on my TBR now I don't have to like look for old books. I can buy books that I've only recently bought which I'm bloody loving and I love this. Didn't disappoint whatsoever. No, I am actually going to save them, my favourite books for the... This is an amazing book. I still need to do my... Today, I would have put my review up on Goodreads and on Amazon. And that's The Holiday Escape by Heidi Swain. It's her latest book. It's a standalone. It's five stars all the way. It was really, really good. About Ali and her dad, Jeff, who run a creative retreat in their home in Hollyhock Cottage. They have guests... They give their guests a dream coastal break. But Ali hankers after something different. And... Ali's survival strategies to escape out of season. She's got a great friend that she's really close to. And then she meets a guy she met when she was away and it was supposed to be like a one night stand and things like that. But then he appears at her current life and she has to face it. Very good book, very good romance. Talk about found family, family, loss. It tackles really good things. It's an amazing book and I thoroughly loved it. So yeah, I've got my review then I'll let mum borrow it. But Heidi Swain's books don't disappoint. Paige Toon's latest one was amazing. That was an amazing one. I loved it. And then to the last book that I read that it has to, it literally wiped me out. Mum's not going to want to read this. It's Under the Whispering Door by TJ Clune. I loved The House in the Cerulean Sea and I didn't think, this has had mixed reviews. It hasn't been rated as much as it, The House in the Cerulean Sea, but to me it did. It has broke me into a thousand pieces. I will want to reread it when I'm not feeling. There are some triggers. It is about death. So if you're going through anything like that at the moment, please be aware of going through this. It is about death, it's about loss, it's about about second chances on life. It's about looking back and on your life and thinking about how you make decisions and how we are. Grief, loss, everything, it all is one. I can't, even if I talk about this book, it makes me want to cry. But there are some light moments added in and there are some bits where you kind of, you have to laugh. And yeah, you will cry and it's every bit of feels. Again, it counts for Pride Month, so it's really good for that. Um, and Wallace basically dies and he's collected, the Reaper collects him from where she claims it's his funeral. And then he has to go and face death and he gets some choices and before he makes the decision to go up. And what, be it doesn't talk about heaven or hell or anything like that. It does talk about it a little bit, but it doesn't have God as a def definitive character. So I think that's really done really well. And it's just brilliant. Absolutely thoroughly loved it. Five stars, favourite for the year so far, but not one for mum. Now I briefly want to briefly show you what books that I have got that I'm adding to the TBR. I only go into a little description because this is going to be a long video. First one is The Vanishing Act of Audrey, Audrey Wilde. The four, when four sisters arrive at Applecott Manor to spend the summer, all is clearly not well. They find their aunt and uncle still reeling from the disappearance of their only daughter five years before. Why did Algie vanish? Who is keeping her fate secret? As the sisters are lured into a mystery of missing cousin, the stifling summer takes a shocking, deadly turn. One will leave blood on their hands and put the other girl in danger. I thought this was historical fiction, but I've got a funny feeling it's like mystery thriller, and I hope it's not too thrillerish. I don't know. I did like, I really like the, the Glass House by this author, so I'm hoping I like this. Let's just give it a go. These do need to go somewhere else. Oh my goodness, right. Those are my two books that need to be reviewed. Then I've got The Sort, Hou sort Houses by Halia Alian. This got, has got rave reviews. It's historical fiction. Where do you go when you can't go home? It's about the Six Day War in 1967. It's about Kuwait and it's set in Kuwait City and the Palestine resistance. As the family, right. On the eve of Alia's wedding, her mother reads her future in a cup of coffee drinks. Although she keeps her predictions to herself that day, they soon become to pass in the wake of a six-day war. The family are forced to move to Nebulus, to the, from Nebulus to the Kuwait city. Ali and her husband reluctantly build a new life, but Ali's husband becomes torn between the needing to remember and learning to forget as he's haunted by the disappearance of his brother, who gets caught up in the Palestinian resistance. It isn't a long book. It's quite short, but it does look like it's tackling some hard-hitting issues. But again, it's set in another country. It's one I really wanted to read because of that. Then I want you to read the next book, in the second book in the Hedgehog Hollow series, and this is The New Arrivals. It's a contemporary series. I I really loved the first one. I, didn't, I found certain bits of the first one hard, but this one, I did enjoy it. 
And this is life at Hedgehog Hollow has never been busier for Samantha, but with an influx of new hogs and hoglets to take care of, not to mention a full-time job and an ongoing family issues, has she taken on more than she can handle? And she has Josh by her side. Contemporary, love the first book in the series, looking forward to carrying on with it. It's just what I need. And then the next contemporary is, I've got three obviously contemporaries, and then my library contemporary. This is the Not Ladies Midnight Spoon Club by Faith Hogan. I didn't buy this long ago. I can't remember when I bought it, but it does look good. Three very different women united by one thing, the chance to start again. So again, three women, friendships, what more do I want? Elizabeth was the village doctor, dutiful wife. Now he, she's a widow and he's left her in crippling debt. Oh God, that could be fun. Jo loves her life in Valley Cove until she receives the devastating news that changes everything. Lucy is burned out, burned out and struggling to cope with a high-pressured hospital job, as well as being a single mother to a teenage couple. In the search of solace, they form the Ladies' Midnight Swimming Club, a freedom in the Irish Sea. So it's got Irish ones, they reference. Looks good. Hope I enjoy it. Again, this one's not too long, which I love because it's only just over 300 pages. Then a book that I got given quite cheap from the library, but it's a Lucy Diamond, but it looks quite summery if you can see. It's very battered and bruised. It's The Secrets of Happiness by Lucy Diamond. Stepsisters Rachel and Becca couldn't be more different. Rachel is happily married with three children and a great career, while Becca has a dead-end job and a disastrous love life. But when Rachel doesn't come home one night, Becca is called up to help and soon realises that her stepsister's life is not so perfect after all. It's a chunky book, so it counts for Big Book Summer, but it looks really good. I'm looking forward to it. Then I fancied a middle grade fantasy because I really need fantasy, and this is A Place Called Perfect. They've got their eyes on you. It's by Helen Duggan. It would count with disability rep, but it's the star of a series. So if I like it, I'll carry on. I'm not going to push myself. Violet never wanted to move to the perfect. She wanted to, she wants, who wants to live in a, in a town where everyone has to wear glasses to stop them going blind? Who wants to be neat and tidy and perfectly behaved all the time? God, I wouldn't. Violet quickly, Violet, quick, Violet quickly discovers that there is something weird going on in town and she keeps hearing voices. Her mum is acting strange and her dad has disappeared. When she meets Boy, she realises that her dad is not the only person to have vanished, and the mysterious watchers are, gu keep it, are guarding a perfectly creepy secret. Ooh, spooky. Then my two library books. The first one is a Jill Paul book, and it is The Collector's Daughter, and it's set partly in Tutankhamun in 1922, and basically Lady Evelyn Herbert's dreams are realised when she sets foot in the toss lost tomb of Tutankhamun. And that's set in 1922. But after months of the discovery, after the discovery, her uh, are marred by a tragedy when Eve's father dies suddenly and her family is torn in two. Desperate to put the past behind her, Eve retreats into a private life with a new husband. And then you've got a future current timeline, but she's harbouring a dark secret about what really happened in Egypt. And when a young woman comes asking questions years later, the happiness Eve finally found is threatened once more. Not too long, about 300 odd pages. I'm trying to see if this, book, this author's written other books. I think, I don't think I've read any other books by this author, although the library has lots more by her, so I'm hoping I like it. And then to a short but sweet summer book that I saw, admit it's hardback book, but it's set in Greece again, because I love my books set in Greece. It's set in actually Corfu, actually. And a holiday, a holiday dream dreams are made of and it's about a newly single on her day she turns 30. Freya Johnson moves, boards the last minute of flight to Corfu. Little does she realise that the holiday will change her life forever. Enter Hollywood star Nicholas Caden, whose entourage is stirring up in the village of Cassiope, where he films a new movie. He's hot, okay? This is short but sweet. It's less than 300 pages, only about 200 odd pages. So I need that. Let's see. Right, so these are the books that I've read and the books that I'm adding to my TBR. Are there any you're interested in? Are there any you look forward to? Are there any of the books that I've put on, added on to my TBR you think I should read quickly? I'm desperate to know. If you got to the end of this video, leave a beach or a sand emoji if you've got a beach or sand emoji. Any like water. Actually, no, leave a water emoji because it's got like the beach and the sea. So like sand or sea. I think sand or sea emojis, I think we've got them if you get to the end of the video. Something like that. If that's anything that makes you think of a beach, that'll be that. Get to that and let me know what you're enjoying reading. I love talking to you all guys in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, not subscribe yet, ring on my ding -a -ling, and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.